Well, if you want to argue who's better, everybody can weigh in and make their case and all of that. But you might be interested in what certain people had to say about that, if it's a debate or not, and, and who they think is the best. And for more on that, let's go to the field and check in with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Well, Al, there are 20 living quarterbacks in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and we pulled every single one of them and asked, if you had to pick Peyton Manning or Tom Brady to quarterback your team, who would you choose and why? Well, they were all clearly conflicted about picking one future Hall of Famer over another. As Steve Young told me, we're talking Rembrandt and Van Gogh. There's no way I choose. So, there were four abstentions. 13 and a half voted for Manning, two and a half for Brady. Terry Bradshaw and John Elway went with Brady because of the rings. His three Super Bowl titles to Manning's one. The case for Manning, Troy Aikman told me, nobody does more at the quarterback position and has more to do with his team's success than Manning. And Dan Fouts thought that what Manning has done in that style of offense has revolutionized the game. Oh, and I'll ask for that half vote. That came from Joe Montana. He said he started Brady in the first half, Montana playing the role of Switzerland you should have held his feet to the fire and said okay who starts in overtime I wish he'd have been in Switzerland when I played him in the Super Bowl <laughs> he's Steven Gustowski to kick off New England won the toss and they've elected to defer so Indianapolis is going to get the ball Bill Belichick 10th season as the New England coach Jim Caldwell the rookie head coach for the Colts crowd rises is one at Lucas Oil Stadium and away we go. Gostowski's kick is fielded by Chad Simpson from the goal line. Simpson will be taken down at the 23 yard line. Manning and company going to work and let's take a look at the Indy starters. Peyton Manning University of Tennessee. Joseph Badai. Louisiana State. Reggie Wayne. The U. Pierre Garçon. Mountain. Dallas Clark, University of Iowa. Gian Robinson, Missouri Western State University. Charlie Johnson, Oklahoma State. Ryan Lilja, Kansas State. Jeff Saturday, North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Kyle Devan, Oregon State University. Brian Deem, Northern Illinois. Peyton Manning making his 185th consecutive start. Started his first game as a rookie and hasn't missed the start since. Ball at the 23-yard line. And they start with a run. And Joseph Adai takes it up to the 27-yard line. For Manning, he was the MVP of the league last year. But in a way, he's kind of where Brady was at this time last year. Remember, he had the bursa sack problem, didn't play in preseason. It took him a while to get started. He was very mediocre through the first seven weeks. The team was three and four, and then blazing hot down the stretch to finish nine and oh. Second down and six. Manning in the pocket, protected well, but the pass is a short one for a minimal gain. Gian Robinson makes the catch. Let's take a look at the Patriots starters. Mike Wright, Cincinnati. Vince Wilford, University of Miami. Derek Burgess, Ole Miss. Kerry Guyton, Georgia Tech. Gerard Mayo, Tennessee. Tully Batikane, University of California. Jonathan Wilhite, Auburn. Brandon Merriweather, proud father of Morgan Merriweather. Brandon McGowan, the U of Maine. Lee Bodden, Duquesne University. Darius Butler, UConn. As if to give us time to introduce the defense, Indianapolis went into a rare huddle. Third down and six. Manning throws over the middle and the pass is incomplete. And it will be a three and out on the pass intended for Pierre Garçon. Gary Guyton in on the coverage. And you took a look at that New England defense. Among others tonight, they're missing Ty Warren, who was a late scratch because of an ankle injury. Uh, you're going to see Garçon come out and around here on the inside. This is a bit of a matchup. They played three different coverages on all three snaps there. So the game has already started with Bill Belichick and Peyton Manning. Pat McAfee is the rookie punter drafted in the seventh round out of West Virginia. And it's a good booming kick. Welker backs up. West from his 18 yard line brings it back up to the 31 yard line. And let's take a look at the New England starters. Tom Brady, Michigan. Lawrence Moroni, Normandy High School. Randy Moss, 
Rand University. Plus Welker, Texas Tech. Benjamin Watson, Georgia. Chris Baker, Michigan State. Sebastian Ballmer, University of Houston. Logan Mankins, Fresno State. Dan Connell, Southeast Missouri. Stephen Neal, Cal State Bakers. Nick Kasher, University of Toledo. You saw Ballmer starting for the injured Matt Light, who got hurt in Denver a month ago. Dan Copen will start at center. He was shaken last week. But he is in the lineup. And the crowd now in full war as the pass is caught on the outside by Moss to the 36 yard line. He's tackled by the rookie Jacob Lacey. For Tom Brady, first quarter, first game last year, Bernard Pollard of Kansas City rolls into his knee. And the next thing you know, he's on an operating table. And the Patriots, not happy that he had his surgery on the West Coast. And he had a staph infection to boot after that. But Tom told us last night he feels great. He said the only thing, the last thing to have come back for him is his energy level. Everything else structurally and physically, he said, feels terrific. Second and four. And it's Maroney picking up a couple. Third and short as we take a look at the Colt defensive starters. Robert Mathis, Eastside, McNair High School. Antonio Johnson, Mississippi State. Daniel Muir, Kent State. Dwight Freeney, Syracuse. Philip Wheeler, Georgia Tech. Gary Brackett, the Auburn. Clint Session, Pittsburgh. Jacob Lacey, Naming Forest High School. Melvin Bullock, Naming Forest High School. Antoine Mathieu, the real H.U. Demeca, Howard University. Gerard Powers, Auburn. Two rookie corners. Colts have had more than their share of injuries on defense, and yet these two teams are 1-2 and fewest points allowed this season. And that pass is incomplete. Jamie Silva covering on the play. Benjamin Watson was the intended receiver. And so each team starts with a three and out. Well, anytime you don't see help on Dwight Freeney coming off the edge here, you know Tom Brady is going to get that thing out of there in a hurry. So almost a tip off from the start. You don't see help on Freeney, you know it's going to be about a two second throw by Tom Brady. Chris Hansen is the punter, and TJ rushing is back for the Colts. Rushing gets under it and falls for a fair catch at the 10 yard line. So a three and out for each side. Indianapolis and New England from Indiana. Sunday night football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. By Audi Truth in Engineering. By Sprint. Official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. And by Coors Light, when the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. Some scenes from this great rivalry, which really, of course, got, got heated up after Tom Brady uh, became the starting quarterback in New England. Drew Bledsoe had started the decade. And then Brady comes on in 2001, guides them to the Super Bowl. Manning, of course, has been here throughout. He was the number one overall pick in the draft in 1998. Both start from the 10-yard line. And off the play fake. Dallas Clark makes his 61st catch of the season. Out to the 36-yard line on a first down. He breaks out of a Brandon McGowan tackle, a 25-yard gain. Well, Rodney Harrison probably is not going to like this one very much. Anytime you give Dallas Clark a free release, you are asking for trouble down the middle of the field. That has been the game plan of the Patriots in past years. Hit him and hit him again. That time they missed. From the 35 now. Against the New England defense that what else is new will show Manning every look in the books tonight. To a die. You look at Bill Belichick and Chris. One thing he's had to do is is mix and match. Five regular starters from last season are gone. Ty Warren is gone tonight with an ankle injury. Jarvis Green was already hurt. And of course, at the beginning of the season, they sent Richard Seymour to Oakland. Well, the good news though is they're playing the Colts tonight. So basically, they've been playing a nickel with only two down linemen in the game. That being Vince Wilfork and Mike Wright, both essentially nose tackles. 
can't miss easy either as Manning goes back and that catch is made and that is Pierre Garçon getting position. He got in front of Lee Martin who has come over to the Colts after several years in Cleveland and then last year in Detroit and was able to reach back toward Manning and make the grab first down. One of the things we talked to Peyton Manning about was the idea that he knew they were going to take away Reggie Wayne knew they were going to try and take away Dallas Clark. He really felt like the Pierre Garcon may be positioned to have a big night. From the 49 yard line. Manning deep down the left side and making the catch and staying in bounds at the 27 is Reggie Wayne. Merriweather and Wilhite were right there. Wilhite with the coverage and Merriweather coming over for safety help, but it's good for 25 on a great grab by number 87. Jonathan Wilhite has to be thinking, are you kidding me? How can I have better coverage than that? And Peyton went up and quick snapped it. And there's a whistle. And there's also, I think, going to be a challenge before he could snap it. Belichick was right there. Scott Green is the referee. challenging the ruling on the field that it was a completed pass. But right. one thing that no huddle does is it doesn't allow you to talk to the guys upstairs, the assistant coaches. You just have to make the call pretty much on your own. We think the ruling on the field is going to be upheld. Reggie Wayne getting both feet in, and in effect, you'll see it might even be three feet in because there's one. He drags the right foot as he has control right there. Two, and then just for good measure, that foot is also, we think, in. That it won't matter though because what Scott Green is going to see is that angle and this one as well. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver. Charge with a timeout. First down, Indianapolis. And again, Chris, it's one of those things where normally, if they ran a normal offense, normal pacing, the assistant coaches upstairs could take a look at it. That challenge had to be made on the sideline by Belichick, you know, by the seat of his pants. Because Peyton Manning got him to the line of scrimmage and quick snapped the ball, he forced his hand. First down, 26 yard line. This drive began. At the Indianapolis 10. And it fires over the middle, and that's going to be good for another first down to Dallas Clark. He's covered by the rookie safety out of Oregon, Pat Chung. First down, Colts. Little pressure here, and Derek Burgess gets pressure around the corner as well. Bill Belichick telling us last night, you cannot pressure Peyton Manning. You can't blitz him and be successful. And Peyton just confirmed what Bill Belichick thought. From the New England 14 yard line. Inside handoff goes to a die. Indianapolis does really not have a running game to speak of. Right now, 3.7 is the team average. And for a die, who was a first round pick back in 06, his average this season, 3.4. League average is always. 4.04.1. My goodness, Vince Wilfork just took Jeff Saturday and just planted him on the seat of his pants and just blew him right into Joseph Adai. Wow. Wilfork at 6'2 and 325. Saturday gives away about 35 pounds. Second and 11. Good pocket for Manning. Has time. And that pass is a little high and incomplete. Pierre Garçon was the intended receiver, and Baden covering on the play will be third down and 11. Well, they're doubling the inside receivers now. Bill Belichick is down here in the red zone, and Pierre Garçon on the outside has man coverage. He has to be able to win this battle. They're basically giving him an opportunity. They're doubling Reggie Wayne right here, but they're singling up on the outside, and that's one he just has to win. He won it earlier in the drive, but not that time. Third down and 11. They bunch three receivers to the right. Clark is to the left. Manning will set up a screen. Caught by a die. Inside the five. Touchdown, Colts. Looked right, looked left, settled underneath. And they go 90 yards in eight plays to take the lead. 
Well, Peyton is just going to fake a screen out to the right and then come back across as Joseph Adai works back underneath. Beautifully blocked, and I tell you, for the Colts, that's what works when these receivers get down the field and get some blocks. That time, Dallas Clark with the difference maker. They ran it twice for three yards. They have some indoor fireworks here. <laughs> Don't get me started on, on fireworks in, in indoor stadiums. Matt Stover for the extra point. That's good. And the Colts offense is on fire as well. 8-19 remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 Indianapolis. Good way to enhance the experience of Sunday night football. 7 to nothing is the score. And the kickoff is taken a yard into the end zone by Matthew Slater. Comes up to the 27 yard line. So now that Indy defense will come out. Chris talking about if there's one key to the game, it's the pressure that the defensive ends can put on. And that is the key to a lot of games against the Colts. Can Franey and Mathis bring the heat? And very often they do. Meanwhile, Tony Banta Kane is down. So the Patriot defense already minus Ty Warren a late scratch, and now Banta Kane is on the turf. Jay will promo that show anytime for some green. <laughs> Tomorrow night. We're talking about Freeney since. 0-2 sack fumble, which is a, the worst thing in a quarterback's lexicon. And the two of them have combined for 56. First down, ball is at the 27-yard line. And the ball is handed off to the versatile Kevin Fall. Been doing his thing for 11 years with the Patriots. Short gain here. It'll be second down and seven. And there is Tully Banta Kane, who is a linebacker starter and also on special teams as well who took a shot on that run back and he's probably their best pass rusher and when you're playing against Peyton Manning you can't afford to have him sitting there Belichick going over things with that defense which watched the Colts go 90 yards Sam Aiken is in the game he's wide to the right he's their number three receiver and the ball is handed off to Falk. And Kevin fighting his way toward what he hopes will be a first down off a Stephen Neal block, but he is a little bit short of it. They'll spot the ball at the 36 and a half. It's going to make it third down and in inches. Dan Copen and Stephen Neal right here. Two of the three best interior players, I think, in the game, along with Logan Mankins. And we're starting to see right now the Patriots trying to establish a running game early so they don't have to deal with these Colts pass rushes. And it's Brady who'll keep it himself and lunge ahead with a good thrust to the 40 yard line and that will be a first down. Jim Caldwell was the anointed one. They talked about him replacing Tony Dungy whenever it was that Tony was going to retire. That had been the case for over a year. The only prior head coaching experience is when he was the head coach at Wake Forest. And he got fired in 2000 and was trying to get a job for one of his assistants. And he called Tony Dungy, who was at Tampa. And Coldwell winds up getting a job on Tony's staff and then comes to Indianapolis when Tony came here in 02. Brady off the fake. Has time. And in stride hits Randy Moss. And Moss with Bullock trying to take him down but he can't bring him down until he gets to the six yard line perfect pass over the middle threads the needle in stride 55 yards first and goal well, all those running plays set up this linebackers are now stepping up on the play action fake and you're able to get Randy Moss with a free release right down the middle I'm going to suggest that's not a great idea for the future. When they've had success against Randy Moss, they get somebody out in his face and beat him up a little bit. When he gets long striding, tough to stop. Maroney is the tailback. 
He swings to the outside, and Maloney will take it to the one-yard line. He's tackled there by Clint Session. They've been running back by committee in New England this uh, season for the most part. Of course, Fred Taylor was brought in from Jacksonville, got hurt. Maroney, and he's been a disappointment to a degree through his career, number one draft choice. You thought he'd be better by now, and he understands that. His average right now, 4.3, but he has an opportunity with all of the injuries, Sammy Morris and Fred Taylor, to really shine. But over the last three games, when he's gotten that chance, closer to five yards of carry. Second down and goal. Maroney again. And into the end zone he goes for the touchdown. So a 90 yard Indianapolis drive is answered very quickly in a three and a half minute 73 yard drive by the New England Patriots. An extra point away from tying the game. They bring in an extra offensive lineman over here, Mark Lavore. And he just gets the double team and gets them in. And boy, Lawrence from Maroney talking to him last night, he said, I'm tired of all the suggestions. I'm going back to what I know about running the football. And really, it's paid off. He's been running much tougher lately. Steven Gostowski for the extra point. Chris Hansen to hold it. After each team goes three and out, each team with a long touchdown drive. That's more like it. 447 left in the quarter. 7-7. Right here on NBC. What do you got for that? <laughs> Used to be a Raider fan. <laughs> Five yards into the end zone, Chad Simpson will down it there. And with 4.47 to go, Peyton Manning coming back. And, of course, the big play on that drive was the pass to Moss. Well, we talked about what happens when you establish your run. Watch Gary Brackett hesitate for just a moment here on this play-action fake. Going to step up, and now you have not a tight end, but Randy Moss running behind you, and he simply couldn't get in the hole against that cover two defense. Donald Brown comes into the game. Brown was their number one draft choice. Hurt his shoulder a couple of weeks ago, so he has been inactive for the last couple of games. Rod Ninkovich is now going to play the outside linebacker spot, normally occupied by Tully Bantakane. He is number 50. Manning setting up and throwing, and that'll be caught by Wayne, and Wayne will pick up a first down outrunning the inside linebacker, Gary Guyton. Meanwhile, let's go back to Joseph Adai, who hurt his hand or fingers on the touchdown play. Watch the off the right hand, and he gets it tangled up with Brandon McGowan, and he went from the bench back to the locker room. So that's why Brown is in at the moment. The ball is at the 36-yard line. First and 10. And a toss to the rookie. And he'll get taken down by Lee Martin. So, Andrea, what do you know about a die right now? Well, he just came back on the field, Al. His index and middle finger on his right hand are taped together over his gloves. At least they do have Donald Brown in there, as you mentioned. Remember, though, he missed the past two games with a sprained left shoulder. Right, and ironically, it was a die hurting his hand on a reception. Of course, it was after the reception as he got hit at the goal line. But in his touchdown tonight, a 15-yard pass play to a die. Second down and nine with the ball to the 37-yard line. Time again, and that pass is caught by Austin Colley, the good looking rookie out of BYU, drafted in the fourth round, who's already made a big mark. Darius Butler, a rookie from Connecticut, makes the tackle. Well, now let's look at the change up here. Gary Guyton, a linebacker, is going to come up on Dallas Clark and bump and run coverage as they go back to the no huddle offense. Third down and seven from the 39 yard line. Holly in motion to the inside. Manning has to step away from pressure, and the pass is incomplete. Pressure coming from behind, trying to get it out to Brown. He was covered by Gerard Mayo, and Myron Pryor, the rookie lineman out of Kentucky, is the guy at that time who put the heat on Manning from behind. Yeah, filling in for Tully Bantikane is going to come around here and get some pressure. This is exactly what they were trying to do by starting Derek Burgess in this game, trying to get a little additional pressure, and that time Ninkovic got there. Here's McAfee now to punt. On 
longtime punter Hunter Smith now with Washington. He's been involved in two touchdowns, one run and one pass this season. And Wes Welker brings it back to the 29 after a short kick. 42 yard boot, 10 yard return, 307 remaining in the quarter. Game tied at seven. Teams of the decade. The decade drawing to a close. Most regular season wins. The Colts 109 and the Pats 108. 12 or more games the Colts have won over the last six seasons. Going on a seventh. And if you look at the Patriots with that perfect regular season. And the Patriots with those three Super Bowl wins. And the Colts with one. So three rings for Belichick. Tony Dungy won the ring following the 06 season with Manning. This game now tied 7 all. First and 10 with three minutes to play in the quarter, and the ball is the 29 yard line. And they'll start with a run. And this is Kevin Falk going to the outside after getting initially stopped at the line of scrimmage. He's able to break free, and Bethea is back there, and Mathis goes all the way back down the field to run him down after a gain of 29. Well, one of the problems that you're going to have here, you've got Gerard Powers, a corner coming up here and trying to make this play. Because of all the receivers on the field, it forces the Colts to go into this nickel and dime defense. But watch Robert Mathis. You talk about how much this defense hustles. How many defensive ends you ever seen do that? First and ten, Brady off the fake, pumping. And then going deep and much too deep, Randy Moss was covered by Jacob Lacy. It'll be second down and 10 with 2.20 remaining in the quarter. Sebastian Vollmer is the new starter at left tackle for the Patriots, and I don't think that Dwight Freeney thought one time during the course of this game that he would see one-on-one -on -one protection on the outside. But Vollmer, who has played very, very well for Matt Light, did a great job there. The just activated Isaiah Standback comes into the game. Number nine, he was a quarterback at Washington. There's Vollmer. One of multiple second round choices for the Patriots in the last draft. And the handoff to Kevin Falk, and he goes next to nowhere. Stopped at the 40 yard line. That's Powers again in on the action, coming up to the line of scrimmage to stop him. Yeah, Gerard Powers, the rookie cornerback, just got his revenge on that one. <laughs> Bill Belichick got him on the last one as Falk broke out of there on the long run, but that time Powers got his. Third and nine. protection and then a great catch by Randy Moss at the 21 yard line going to the outside getting position on Bethay and a 20 yard gain in the first down off a third and long boy Tom Brady with a pump fake right here is going to pump to the outside and freeze this cornerback right here so that he can't fall back underneath Randy Moss great play by Brady and now they go no huddle is it is Brady and he I think he goes no huddle there thinking that 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 play was close enough on the sideline that they wanted to avoid a challenge a potential challenge on the Moss catch that was Moss's third catch and so Brady goes to the line of, of scrimmage as if to indicate hey we don't want to give them time to think about this and overturn it clearly in. Second down and nine. Brady with three completions tonight in five attempts, all three to Moss. Now a flag. Scott Green throwing the flag on the inside handoff to Kevin Falk. Holding. Offense. Number 67. Ten yard penalty. Second down. The center, Dan Copen. The center here, and it's going to be interesting to watch Dan Copen tonight. He was out of the game last week with a knee injury some question as to whether or not he was going to be able to make this one at that time Daniel Muir just a little too quick for him. Now in the final minute of the quarter second down and 19. That's Watson moving 
into the slot on the left. Fake to Maroney. Pass over the middle. Welker makes the catch. He gets it to the 15 yard line. So it takes Brady almost a quarter, but you know sooner or later he's going to find Wes Welker, who makes his team leading 56th catch of the year. And that was the first snap this entire game the Colts played defensively without their nickel. Tom Brady saw it and picked it apart. 56 grams for Welker, who's also missed a couple of games. So that's in six games plus a quarter. Good quarter, the game tied at seven. And NBC's Sunday Night Football from Indianapolis continues after these messages. Second quarter in Indianapolis. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Andrea Kramer. The game is tied at seven, and it's third down and four for the Patriots at the Indianapolis 15-yard line. Kevin Fall flanking Brady. They've got Julian Edelman has missed a couple of games with a broken forearm in the game at wideout. And the pass goes to the outside, and that is Isaiah Stanback just activated, making the catch and picking up a first down. Well, one of the problems that you have, you try and come up and bring everybody around the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of support underneath. That time we're seeing Tom Brady. Anytime these pass rushers just, they have to make a quick move to try and get there. You can see how frustrated they've been so far because Tom Brady has just gotten the ball out of his hand so quickly. Stand back. Seldom used performer past couple of seasons at Dallas had two receptions last year. Ball at the six. Here come the Colts, and the pass is incomplete. Brady could feel it coming from his left side, intended for Randy Moss, and got it away quickly. Second and goal. Well, they came with a safety blitz that time, and it left one on one on with the outside. Randy Moss against Gerard Powers, and they call this rookie an old man. They said they have never seen anybody come in with the kind of understanding of the game of football that this kid has. He just continues to impress them. They think he's a future pro bowler. Moss got shaken up. Moss comes off the field here. Back on the bench on second down and goal out of a tight formation. And they give it to Maroney looking for a slot. Behind a Ben Jarvis Green Ellis block. And he is tackled at the four yard line. It'll be third down and goal. And Moss needs a moment on the sideline. Yeah, for Randy Moss, that's what Tom Brady said. We said, all right, when you go out and you're playing against the Indianapolis Colts, what's the first thing you look at when you break the huddle? His answer was easy. How they play in Randy Moss. Third and goal. They send Moss out to the right. Walker initially starts to line up in the slot that way. Now comes this way. Stand back is wide to the left. Third and goal. And Brady's going to go down at the 14, and that's Robert Mathis. Mathis and Freedy had not put that much heat on Brady to this point. And a big sack on a third and goal, fourth down now. Robert Mathis sets up Nick Casher outside. And Dick then goes back inside and comes away with the sack. Huge play. That's the kind of pressure they're going to need tonight if they're going to have a chance against this Patriots offense. Red zone woes continue for New England. Right now they're 26th in the league in red zone touchdown percentage. 31 yard attempt coming up here for Gostowski to try to give New England the lead and he does. A minute 45 into the second quarter. Rivalry of the decade. New England 10, Indianapolis 7. Bill Belichick, he knows Peyton Manning extremely well. He knows a lot of great quarterbacks very well against Joe Montana. There was his record against Dan Marino. This is Bill as a head coach, Cleveland and New England, and is the primary defensive assistant, either with the Giants in the 80s or the Jets at the end of the 90s. And Manning 7-7 seven and seven in the regular season. Two and one in postseason. So when you think about it, Belichick and Manning have played this little chess game for the equivalent of more than a full season. They have their three postseason confrontations. And that kick is fielded eight yards deep in the end zone by Chad Simpson. 
Well, you can watch them on the sideline going over the Polaroids, and they're looking at the same exact pictures. But as far as brain power, Peyton Manning against Bill Belichick, that's pretty good. That's a pretty serious competition on the respective sidelines. And Peyton was telling us last night that Bill Belichick stands at the 50 and watches us warm up. I turn around and watch them warm up. And, of course, they do completely the opposite of what they do in the game during pregame sure. warm up. There is a lot of gamesmanship going on out here. The essence of the game is deception. Donald Brown is the running back. First down. Lexington, the 20. 51, Carolina, Carolina. Quick drop, quick pass. Austin Polly thought they're going to whistle it out of bounds at the 25 yard line. That is where he steps out after a gain of, let's make it the 26, gain of six. One of the things that you'll see the Colts do is use these little pick plays in here. They're pretty good at it. They don't always make a lot of contact like there. All it does is create a little space for that right. slot receiver to come off and make the play. That time Peyton thought he saw a blitz and went right to the pick. Second and four. NBC promo. <laughs> Hand off to Brown. And Brown for a very short gain over the right side. It'll be third down and three. As you can see, Banta Kane questionable with that rib injury sustained on a special teams play. And Adalis Thomas, who's been in a, uh, I wouldn't say the doghouse, but kind of, kind of let somebody mind them for a couple of weeks is back in and that pass is incomplete intended for Pierre Garçon and Lee Bodden with the coverage on the play and it'll be fourth down. Lee Bodden the guy that started 15 games for the Lions last year an old war horse in this league is just going to beat Pierre Garçon to the ball and I think a lot of times these Patriots cornerbacks they read the drop of Peyton Manning. So once you see a corner do something like that, look for those double moves to come. McAfee. My floater, fair catch, pull for by Welker. 12.09 remaining. First hit. Pass by three. Odd juxtaposition when you look at how they both got into the National Football League. Manning, of course, was a heralded high school player as well as a college player at Tennessee, and you knew he'd go one or two in the draft, and he went number one. Brady played at Michigan, and you know the story, sixth round. So whereas Manning was the first guy picked in the draft, Tom was the 199th in 2000. And they send it out to Welker, and Wes Welker will pick up 12 yards on a screen to the outside, tackled by Gary Brackett. One of the early stories in this game for me is Sebastian Vollmer, the left tackle who's playing for Matt Light. Here's a guy that grew up in Germany, was a soccer player and swam, and just didn't think it was quite physical enough for him. So he joined a local American football team, made the German national team and European all-star team, traveled to the States for the global championships and impressed so many people there that they had about 10 recruiters show up on his doorstep, ended up going to Houston and went out playing in the National Football League against Dwight Freeney. On first and 10, and Brady buying time. Sends it deep down the field and it is Moss making the catch and going into the end zone. Antoine Bethea is right there, but Moss makes it look so easy as he gets under it. That ball hung forever, and he's able to make the catch and go into the end zone. I absolutely love what they're doing here. Forget the corners. Go run your routes on the safeties. You've got Antoine Bethea going straight down the middle of the field, basically having to turn and run against Randy Moss. Not happening. So Randy Moss against the safety, just an unfair competition. Tom Brady took advantage. Look at that catch. Oh, it's great. Big key again, Sebastian Vollmer. Look at the job he's doing on Dwight Freeney. That route took some time. He had him under control. Moss had a 71-yard touchdown reception last week, 63 tonight. The extra point by Gostowski is good. Moss has caught four balls for 144. 
And New England has a 10-point lead early in the second quarter. Tony Dungy is back in New York and, of course, watching the game in our studios at 30 Rock. And clearly, Randy Moss has been the story of the game so far. And in, in addition to Moss, what else have you seen so far, Tony? Well, they've done a great job, New England, moving him around to get him away from the double team. But also, the Colts haven't gone to Dallas Clark, even though he's been covered by a linebacker a lot. I think Peyton may be out thinking himself, figuring they're going to take him away. Uh, they'll start to go to him, I'm sure, against that linebacker coverage. And we'll watch that as this drive will commence after the run back. And the kick is taken a yard into the end zone by Chad Simpson. And Chad will bring it out past the 20 and get tackled up at the 23-yard line. Kyle Arrington made the hard hit. Let's see if Peyton does go to Clark here. Clark has caught two balls tonight for 37 yards. Wayne has caught a pair as well for 41. Well, one of the things that Peyton's had trouble with here lately is the fact that no one's respecting his running game. I watched him against Houston last week, and he would go play fake on the stretch play that they used to run so well, and the linebackers would back up. It looked like a run, and the linebackers were going back. into the ground. Nothing happening. Those are the head to the line of scrimmage. He was out of the pocket, so there's no grounding. Second and ten. But you cannot be one-dimensional against great football teams. Now there is a flag. You have to at least throw it with a receiver somewhere in the neighborhood. Offensive pass interference. Number 17 blocking downfield on a forward pass. Ten-yard penalty. First down. So it has nothing to do with grounding, but the penalty is on Collie. Well, well, here's what happens on this one. They expect the timing of the screen route to be such that he's going to get it out in about two or three seconds. When it didn't happen and Peyton tried to scramble out of there, they threw off the timing, they blocked early, and that's why you got the foul. So the down remains first down. It's first and 20 for the ball at the... 14 yard line. Brown takes the inside handle. And Brown gets to the 21 yard line. Brandon McGowan making the tackle. It's a gain of seven. It'll be second and 13 through week nine. Indianapolis 29th in the league in rushing yards per game. And the average is 27. There's a die on the sideline right now. His average is 3.4. Brown coming in. His average was 4.6. Second and 13. And over the middle. Brown is open. And Brown up to the 28-yard line. Gary Guyton makes the top stop. So from a first and 20, they go down to a third and six at the 28-yard line. Well, Donald Brown uh, missed a few weeks here. Uh, with a shoulder injury, but now is back in. And he's certainly, he's a very intelligent young man, good football player, very talented college player, and has really picked up this offense amazingly quickly. They don't lose a lot with a die out. 5 10 and 2 10. His size and weight played at Connecticut. 35 from the 29. the middle and look out and Manning goes down you've got a flag down as well at the 29 yard line on the near side of the field and that was a free shot for Gerard Mayo illegal shift offense two men moving penalty is declined fourth down and how did Mayo get that free? Well, it, it ended up happening. Peyton Manning saw what was coming, a blitz look coming, so he brought Dallas Clark down in tight, but the play clock was running down, and on that play, Dallas Clark had to try and get on the line of scrimmage and get Reggie Wayne off. They were both moving, and they come up with the penalty. So the late shift by the Patriots got Peyton that time. This is already McAfee's fourth punt. When's the last time you saw a Colt punter punt four times? in the first 21 minutes of a game. Ball at the 28-yard line. Wes Welker with a run back, and he gets taken down from behind at the 42-yard line. 
Nine and a half to play in the half. New England up by 10. Indiana State Capitol on it. About a 55 degree night outside. Roof closed at Lucas Oil Stadium. First and 10 now for the Patriots from the 43 yard line. New England up by 10. The play fake getting free is Ben Watson and the tight end to the 21 yard line. Tom Brady the inside fake out of the gun. That's good for 36 yards and he's shredding the Indianapolis secondary. Well they shift coverages now and Bullet's going to come down and play a single high safety here. And Tom Brady had the absolute perfect call on. Ben Watson goes right by him with that 4-5 speed of his. And right now the Colts just have no answers for Tom Brady. And another problem Tim Jennings starting corner has just limped off to the 21 yard line. Five yard gain here for Lawrence Maroney second down. Let's go back to 07 and you're going to see a pretty familiar play here. Both these teams undefeated and Randy Moss same thing same guy Antoine Bethea instead of running routes on the corners they go straight up the numbers and force that safety to turn and play like a cornerback they're not used to doing that they're not used to playing these balls in the air and but they got burned years apart second down and five from the 16 yard line here's Brady to the outside and that's caught. That's going to be a first down. Chris Baker making the catch. And the other thing we have to bring up too, Chris, is that Bob Sanders, who was the defensive player of the year a couple of years ago, he is gone for the season. Kelvin Hayden is not playing. And neither is Marlon Jackson. They are already before the game even starts, minus three guys who are huge. And when we were at practice on Friday, Aaron Francisco, who they planned to play as the dime back, got hurt in practice, and he can't play in this one. So they start with two rookie corners. They're all over the place right now. Brady having a field day has thrown for 223 yards in a quarter and a half. And that pass is incomplete. The coverage good that time on Moss looked like a little miscommunication as Gerard Powers with the coverage. And looking back was Moss as if to say, I didn't know you're going to throw me a fade. Slant and go here. Watch this. He's going to come in, fake the slant. Watch the reaction by Powers. This kid's really something. I mean, he is really a good player. How many rookie corners have ever had Randy Moss assigned to him in a one-on-one -on -one situation? And so far, he's held his own. Now, the safeties have been getting burned, but he's done okay. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Moss splits to the right. Brady, under pressure, avoids the sack, gets it away, throws to the end zone. Caught, touchdown. Five plays, 57 yards. And that's 23 going on 24 unanswered points for New England. Edelman, a rookie out of Kent State where he was a quarterback, has just scored his first NFL touchdown. Kostowski for the extra point. I said at the beginning this was they had the buzz of a heavyweight championship fight if this were a heavyweight championship fight I think they would be sending New England to a neutral corner right now to uh, give India a break. No question about it Robert Mathis had a chance over here. He had Tom Brady beats Nick Casher and gets him in his hands but Brady too strong escapes buys a little time and finally finds Edelman. It was really the key to the play. You know, Tom Brady's not a fast guy. He's not a scrambler. But he is a guy that within the pocket has a great feel for when somebody's coming after him. Just avoids, buys time, and you can imagine trying to cover somebody for six seconds at this part of the field. White Freeney on the other side tries to come with the inside move, but they have neutralized him all game long. And in fairness, let's say this, Sebastian Vollmer, for the most part, has not had a lot of help. That has been a tremendous key to this explosion of points for the Patriots. So Edelman with a broken forearm, and he has that cast 
on the right arm and that 24 points against a defense leading the league in fewest points allowed coming in. Simpson downs it in the end zone. They start at the 20. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Disney's Old Dogs in theaters everywhere November the 25th. By Toyota moving forward. By Subway restaurants introducing Subway melts like chicken cordon bleu. Subway eat fresh. And by Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. Don't look at me when I promote old dogs. Would you stop it? You're the best. <laughs> That's your Bengals. First down of the 20-yard line. Chad Simpson is the running back, so now they go to their number three back with a die on the bench and Brown on the bench, and it's Simpson up to the 26-yard line. Watch Vince Wilfork right inside here. We had a chance to meet him last night. He's one of the largest human beings I've ever seen. He comes in, he's a great guy, just so personable, loves playing the game, has a lot of fun. Manning pitches, he throws, and also the receiver, Robinson, hit as he throws, and Mayo says, uh-uh. Well, I tell you, this game is, is almost being played in reverse for me. I thought that that you would see a ton of pressure by the Colts in this game, and yet it is the Patriots' pressure on the outside. Derek Burgess is working on Ryan Deem, and Deem just barely gets a finger on him. I mean, this pre pass protection has to get better for Peyton Manning because they cannot run the ball. They have to rely on him making plays. Colts so out of sync that they huddle before a third down and five from the 25 yard line. Blitz and then back off. That gives Manning time. And the pass is caught by Wayne, and he's able to shoulder his way across the 30 for a first down before he's tackled by Darius Butler. Well, they're going back to the basics of their playbook now. They just get Reggie Wayne in the slot with that little in and out move. He is one of the quicker receivers around. And Jim Caldwell, I guarantee you, he's not panicked. He's seen the Indianapolis Colts have a big comeback before in that championship game. They were down 21 to 3. She was on the staff for years, and that sent the Colts to the Super Bowl. They're racing an 18-point deficit. Now you've got Wayne, and he'll be taken down after an eight-yard game by 24. Jonathan Wilhite. Well, the, the last play, they brought Reggie Wayne in and then out. This time, they're going to go out and then in. The Patriots, as they have done the majority of the times in the past, want to try and pressure these wideouts and get in their face. Second and a long one. Back to the ground now. And this is Simpson up to the 46-yard line. Again, if you missed it, a die scored a touchdown earlier in the game, but had to go to the locker room, and they taped two fingers together, so he has not been in since. We'll take a look at how they've taped him up there. And so it would be in particular difficult to get involved in the passing game again. And their touchdown tonight was on a pass to him. And then Brown played the last couple of series. And now Simpson is in here. That's the fake. Manning is a ton of time. Over the middle, that pass is incomplete. And here come the flags. Pierre Garçon interfered with by Lee Bodden. Interference, defense, number 23. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Well, there you had Pierre Garçon, the guy that Peyton Manning thought was going to have to make some plays, probably the fastest of these receivers. And Lee Bodden is going to grab the jersey there at the end, and when they see that little tug, they're going to call it. That's a 19-yard penalty. First down at the 36-yard line. Simpson inside the 30 picks up a first down and who would have ever figured that Chad Simpson who mainly runs back kicks would come into the game on a very key drive with the team down by 17 and do the job. Well, Derek Burgess is going to blow this one. He's going to loop back inside trying to get a pass rush and he ends up losing contain. Boy Jeff Saturday what a nice move by him to get on the outside and get the contain sealed as well. Great speed on that one by Saturday. Andy huddling again. Donald Brown now comes back in. He's the running back. At the 20 and first down. Four and a half to the half. Fake toss. 
Manning with time. And then he throws that one too deep. Incomplete. Garcon at the back of the end zone. Covered well. Second down. And Garcon needs some help. They're going to run out of ambulances around here. Oof. It really was completely thrown off timing. Garcon, I think, almost thought the play was over, and then Peyton just threw it late. It's Remember, James Sanders who comes in at the end. Remember, no force out anymore, so this is clearly out of bounds. And Garcon still, still down. Hopefully just you know, the wind getting knocked out of him by the legs of Sanders as he went to the turf. Yeah, you can see Sanders legs sort of getting him in the midsection and let's hope all it did was knock the wind out of him. That'll send Hank Basket into the game the former Eagle. And it's not totally shocking in practice on Friday he was taking a lot of reps and so he's sort of slowly the last couple of weeks been playing a little bit more of the former Philadelphia Eagle who uh, just sort of jogged on the field and jogged off so yeah <laughs> I don't know if you get a stat for that just a cameo second and ten. He beats the second year back Will Height, and on a drive that Indianapolis needed to cash in on they get seven. This time you're going to see the safety try and jump underneath when Reggie Wayne went up the field Peyton Manning kept looking left and the safety kept drifting that way until he was completely out of position. Great job by Reggie Wayne getting those feet down too. And now it's officially seven with the extra point as Stover boots it through. So after New England has scored 24 unanswered points. Back come the Colts. Eight plays, 80 yards. It's 24-14 Patriots. Wrapping Garcon's left foot on the sideline after he was hurt and then Wayne makes the catch in the back of the end zone to make it a 10 point game again and with 417 to the half New England will get the ball. Well, Reggie Wayne benefited that time from all the attention that Dallas Clark was getting Tony Dungy talking about how much attention that these Patriots pay to Dallas Clark who had 14 catches a week ago and uh, Bill Belichick said believe me he won't have 14 against us they had a plan for him but it did open up things for Reggie Wayne. Wayne's caught five tonight for 77 yards. Manning is 13 of 19 for 155 and Brady has already thrown for 232 yards. Three yards in. That's Matthew Slater being told don't come out by Wheatley quarterback from Paris and take a look at this. the figures right here those long passes to Moss and near perfect rating for Brady and good numbers for Manning but his team was in serious trouble before that last drive and he's able to lead them down the field on an 80 yard march. Well the number one scoring defense in the NFL is the Indianapolis Colts and so far they've been getting scorched out here. From the 20. Colts showed pressure and checked out of it. And incomplete on a dump off the fall underneath. Second and ten. Again, we were talking about coming into the game, the two teams that had given up the fewest points per game in the league. 13.5 for the Colts, and already 24 tonight. On pace to give up about 50 after allowing 13 and a half. There's Larry Coyer. He is the 
new defensive coordinator Ron Meeks was here for years. The Coyer and Jim Polo go way back second and ten and that pass is incomplete. It'll be third and ten on a pass intended for Wes Welker. Well you saw the Colts and Peyton Manning try and get back to what they do. Wes Welker establishing something underneath is so important for Randy Moss because if they can just play him deep and not play Welker it doesn't work. Crowd looking for a three and out. Spin around and they get their three and out. Well, we've seen Tom Brady on the cover of nearly every magazine in the country, sports and otherwise. He might be added to the list for the ballet magazine <laughs> for next week. <laughs> Never seen him do a little pirouette like that before. Hanson the punt. He's so rushing, counting the guys in front of him to make sure there were 11 out there. Line fair catch called for by rushing. Now one of the great things about this rivalry, the games have been so highly anticipated, and most of them have have really lived up to the building. I read something the other day. Somebody actually wrote that the networks made a deal with the league to make sure these two teams face each other. And even though they're not in the same division, that's not how it works. There's a formula, and it just so happened to work out that almost every year they do face each other. Well, it's a good idea, and if there is that formula, let's have it twice a year. We should do that. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. These two teams used to be in the same division, and the games meant nothing when they did play twice a year. And now that they switch divisions, all of a sudden this is the greatest rivalry of all time. First down from the 25-yard line, Manning. Off the play fake, going deep, and that is caught by Garcon, but then he loses the ball. Looked like Garcon, who had been hurt and had his foot wrapped, twisting around, had it just for a second, bottom of the coverage, but it's incomplete, second down. Well, Garcon's going to have to win these battles. He is one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, the ankle bothering him a little bit, so we'll give him some benefit of the doubt. But it is the coverage on Dallas Clark right now that's allowing him to operate. But so far, Lee Bottom's been winning. Second down and 10. Now Brown. And Brown is able to pull his way to the 30-yard line where he's tackled by Pat Chung. Ball at the 30 now. Third down and five for the Colts. Let's go back to that last play, and we'll take a look at Dallas Clark. Coming off the ball in the slot right over here. And you'll see he's got all kinds of traffic around him. They simply are not going to let Dallas Clark win this battle tonight. And injury timeout. That is Rob Nikovich, who is down on the ground. Banta Kane was injured earlier, so there's the man who was filling the spot. Occupied by the starter Banta Kane. So they are really down to Derek Burgess and Adalis Thomas on the outside. 324 to play in the first half. And as you look down upon the state capital of Indiana, tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by the blind side. I'm not so sure this crowd doesn't think that that injury had something to do with wanting the Patriots to make a few substitutions That's, out there. This is a pretty sophisticated well, crowd. They've seen it happen before. I'm thinking the same thing. When a guy is down and then all of a sudden he gets up and he looks like he can run a marathon, there is some skepticism. Take that back. Take that back. Third down and five. The 30 yard line. start offense number 85 five yard penalty third down that's Garcon who was lined up wide to the right he did 
He definitely flinched. And you know, sometimes this stadium gets so quiet, wide receivers aren't used to hearing the snap count. You know, there's always a bunch of noise and things. And when it's this quiet, you start hearing all those crazy calls by Peyton and he just jumped. <laughs> hey, two on the three. Scared him. Third and ten. Passes behind Clark and incomplete. And Derek Burgess forced the issue getting into the backfield and hitting Manning fourth and ten. And on the coverage, a kid I really liked is Patrick Chung, number 25. Last week and last couple of weeks, he's proven what a great blitzer he is. Now out there in coverage on Dallas Clark, they have some really good young safeties for the New England Patriots. They can hit, they can cover, and they can run. So McAfee to punt fifth. Indy punt. They also punted five times in the first half against the 49ers a couple of years ago. And Hunter Smith is here. Sometimes he wouldn't even have to shower. He would barely see any action. But tonight, a different story. Five boots. Here's Walker from the 27 yard line. And he's out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. Speaking of magazine covers for Brady, he runs the gamut. GQ. SI plenty of times. Of course, there's Peyton <laughs> on the cover. Yeah, there's a little, what do you call it, dichotomy here? And then they both make it from time to time. You know, I think I can say any word in the English language, and they can find something to throw up from the truck down there. Right. These guys are remarkable. They even had magazines on hold. But neither guy's been on popular mechanics, to our knowledge, yet. First and ten from the 36-yard line. And this drive begins with four for a short game. Ticked out of the two-minute warning. Two and a half to play in the half. How much does Tom Brady like Kevin Falk? He was really singing his praises about how he's one of the most intelligent players that he has ever played with. Loves having him in the backfield. Understands the passing game. Understands protections. And just loves him as a guy and as a teammate. He told us last night right at the top of the list of smart players dependable always in the right place 11th year fourth second round pick back in 99 so he preceded Brady in New England and Brady will let the clock run all the way down to the two minute warning in Indianapolis Patriots 24 Colts 14 the Indianapolis Indians Pittsburgh Pirates AAA affiliate in the International League saluting the Colts on this Sunday night, second down and eight. With Brady spinning around and throwing it at the feet of Falk because Robert Mathis got right in his grill. Third down and eight. What a brilliant play by Robert Mathis. Even on the bit of a double team coming on the outside. Watch this move. Splits the two and on a screen pass nearly gets a sack. Robert Mathis against Nick Casher has been the best that the Colts have been able to throw at the Patriots tonight. I took literary license with getting into the grill. <laughs> Third down and eight. You get the point. Here's Brady going to the right side. Caught at the 40-yard line. This is Edelman, but he can only get to the 43-yard line. Edelman with that cast on the right forearm. When he scored that touchdown before his first NFL touchdown, he was a right-handed quarterback at Kent State. He had to spike it left-handed. Watch Stan back here. Going to come down and get a chip against Dwight Freeney. Freeney said, I know I'm going to end up getting hit from all different directions, but for a wide receiver, that's a pretty good one right there. Mm -hmm. So now with 147, Chris Hansen with his third punt of the night, TJ rushing to run it back. Pretty unusual. Eight punts in a game in which there were 38 points before the half. A lot of big plays. Yep. Quick drives. But scoring drives. And Hansen just does get that one away. And it's a floating short kick. It takes a sideways skip. And we're down at the 24 yard line. So Peyton coming back mm -hmm. out. He has 
two timeouts, 33 yard boot. Well, and, uh, yeah, look at that Simpson now, who had come in and, and did a good job with a head injury, and he is questionable to return. So a die with his fingers. Brown's coming back off the shoulder, and now you got a problem with Simpson. Well, that just means throw a couple more wide receivers on the field and let Peyton Manning go to work. This is. Remember him uh, against Tennessee right before the half he drive the drive he put together and this is a guy with a couple of timeouts in a minute and 36 seconds pretty tough to deal with we'll see. By Reggie Wayne for a gain of six. They spotted at the 30 yard line. They're leaving Dallas Clark down inside here to help on protection. It's really widening Derek Burgess here. Clark goes out, out into the pattern. The pass is caught. That's Wayne. They try to get out of bounds, but he can't. Clock keeps running. The ball is up at the 36 yard line, tackled by Will Height. Yeah. Reggie Wayne right out of here. Or Dallas Clark, I'm sorry, on the end of the line of scrimmage, stretching Burgess. And now the pass, a short pass caught by Colley to New England, giving them what Indy's taking underneath with the clock ticking down under 50 seconds. Again, two timeouts remaining for the Colts. And this time it's Gosson. He gets the ball into New England territory at the 48 yard line. He had a penalty. Illegal motion, offense, back was not set. Five yard penalty, still first down. That back was Brown. Illegal motion with 41 seconds. Well, we saw Donald Brown in practice the other day. Of course, he's been out a few weeks with the shoulder injury, and he looked a little uncomfortable. He and Peyton ran into each other one time on a handoff, and you know, you just sit out a couple of weeks in this offense, and all of a sudden there's a lot of foreign things. They change everything every week, and Donald Brown just got caught, just a rookie. Second down and seven. Peyton getting to that point, he's going to have to start looking deeper downfield. As New England knows that as well. I'll tell you, though, you were starting to see the, the defensive linemen for the Patriots in this no huddle offense getting a little worn down here. They don't have much depth left over there because of all the injuries. This will be the 36th play run by the Colts in this half. Down and Manning going deep downfield and then in this drop that is Austin Collie. He had good inside position. The pass was a strike and he dropped it. Third down. Oh, well, nice move by Austin Collie to get open. He's going to go out, fake the out, come back inside. But Al, you know, sometimes they talk about rookies and young players, and we've seen Austin Collie and Pierre Garcon who played so well make some big mistakes tonight. Third down and seven. Out of the outside intended for Colley, and that pass is incomplete. And now Indianapolis is in a situation where they're forced to punt. Well, the one thing I thought Colley had trouble with last week against Houston was the bump and run coverage. And so far, we have seen the Patriots up in his face the entire game, forcing him to make moves against that bump and run coverage, and it hasn't worked. And timeout is taken by. New England. New England. This will be the sixth punt for McAfee. And it's uh, the most punts in a first half by the Colts since 1992. Through the decades. Talking about the Colts at 109, and there they were. Lombardi's Packers with 96 in the 60s. The Cowboys under Landry with 105 in the 70s. And then Bill Walsh started to weave his magic in San Francisco at 104, and that continued into the 90s with George Seifert and Steve Mariucci at 113. So the 49ers had that spectacular 20 year run, and now the Colts at a buck 09 in this decade. And fourth and seven. Walsh is just going to let the punt go. And that punt will be down at the nine yard line with 22 seconds and Brady will probably just take a knee and the teams will head to the locker room. Yeah the Colts do have a couple of timeouts here so 
can't really afford an incomplete pass at this point or you might have to give it back to them. Yep, that's well they've got two timeouts. Right. They can only stop it twice. Belichick looking up at the clock and knowing what the strategy is here. Meanwhile, New England will get the ball to start the second half. Remember, they won the opening toss and elected to defer. So knowing the math right here, you can still do a couple of kneel downs. And, and then on third down, you just let the, the clock run out. And no sense in Indy even calling the timeout right here. The teams will head to the locker room after a 38 point first half halftime in Indianapolis New England 24 the Indianapolis Colts 14 the Toyota halftime show coming right up but first these messages from your local NBC station.